Hello everyone, in this video we are going through physiology of speech. Development of speech, it is developed by two means and stored in memory. There are two ways of the development of speech and once the speech has been developed, it is stored as a memory. First stage, association of words by visual, tactile, auditory and other sensations. And second stage, establishment of new neuronal circuits between auditory area and motor area for the articulation. So there are two stages of the development of speech. First stage, association of words by visual, tactile, auditory and other sensations. And in the second stage, establishment of new neuronal circuits between auditory area and the motor area for articulation. Aspect of speech. Types of speech. There are two types of speech. Spoken speech and written speech. Sensory. It is the understanding of the speech. It is by the understanding of the heard and written words. And motor. That means expression of speech. Expression in the form of spoken and written words. So there are two aspects of the speech. Sensory aspect and motor aspect. Sensory aspect that means understanding of speech, understanding of heard and written words and motor aspect that means expression of speech, expression in the form of spoken and written word. And there are two different types of speech, spoken speech and written speech. So there are different areas of the brain which integrate with each other to give the spoken and written speech. So here, the whatever the visual information we are getting in the form of speech, they have reached to the occipital lobe and occipital lobe to the angular gyrus which is also known as desirin area for meaning of words. This occipital lobe, only the visual cortex, it doesn't gives us the meaning of the words but the meaning of the words occurs in the angular gyrus or the desirin area and it is the visual processing of words that means whatever the word we are seeing and what does it mean it is occurs in the angular gyrus now the second area it is the vernix area it is the language comprehension and intelligence area and it's a sensory aspect of the speech now the third area it is the broca's area it's a motor area so this area responsible for the motor aspect of the speech and it is located in the inferior frontal gyrus and this Broca's area is specifically responsible for the word formation. Now the fourth area it is the Exner's area it's the motor writing center from where the execution of the writing of the word takes place from the Exner's area. Alright so these are different areas of the brain which are integrated to form the different types of speech, spoken and written speech. Now detail about the Wernick's area. It is highly developed on dominant side of the temporal lobe. It is important for the language comprehension and intelligence. Why it is important? Because Wernick's area is specifically related to the sensory aspect of the speech. That means the Wernick's area receives all the information from the visual cortex in the form of visual information, auditory cortex in the form of auditory information and the somatic cortex from the different types of somatosensory information. So all the sensory information related to heard word, written word and tactile are coming to the Wernick area. So it is the important for language comprehension and intelligence. Recall complicated memory pattern involving many sensory modalities like auditory visual areas or auditory and visual information. Lesion of the Wernick's area, it causes the loss of intellectual functions related to language. So Wernick's area is specifically known as the sensory aspect of the speech area. So if this area is damaged, then what is happening? Motor aspect is normal. But the understanding of auditory, visual and tactile words are not able to proceed further. So that is the one next area, most important area.
for the sensory aspect of the speech. Expression in the form of written speech. It is by the exner's area. It is also known as motor writing center. It is situated in the middle frontal gyrus. It processes information coming from the Broca's area. So here the Broca's area is responsible for the word formation and how the word is expressed in term of written words or written speech. It is via the exner's area. So it is known as motor writing center. Along with motor cortex, it initiates appropriate movements of hand and fingers for the written speech. So that is the exner's area or motor writing center. Now the speaking a heard word. How it is possible? When we are hearing some words via the auditory pathway, this information has been reached to the primary auditory cortex. From there, the information go to the Wernick area where the interpretation and comprehension intelligence parts has been converted or covered. From there, it is going to the Broca's area, which is the site for the word formation. And from the Broca's area, it is going to the motor cortex. And from the motor cortex, the information has been transferred to the different muscles of the speech and the speech has been produced. So from Wernick's area to Broca's area, the information done via the arcuate fasciculus. So that is the speaking a heard word. Now the second mechanism, speaking a written word. How it is possible? So here whatever the words we are reading from the textbooks, the visual information has been reached to the primary visual area in the occipital lobe. From there the information go to the angular gyrus where the meaning of the written word takes place. Here it is only the primary visual area. It collects the visual information but the meaning occurs in the angular gyrus. From the angular gyrus, information goes to the Wernick area, which is the main center for the sensory aspect of the speech. From Wernick area, through the arcuate fasciculus, the information goes to the Broca's area. And in the Broca's area, the word formation takes place. And from the Broca's area, the information goes to the motor cortex. And this motor cortex execute the function of spoken speech. So that is the mechanism how the speaking of a written word occurs. Now the applied aspect. First one, dysarthria. So in this abnormality, the articulation of words is impaired but comprehension is not affected. So it's uh, specifically the articulation of the word that means motor aspect of the word has been damaged but the sensory aspect or the comprehension of the words is not that much affected causes paresis that means weakness of the muscle in coordination of muscles of speech for example lesions of pyramidal tract cranial nerves cerebellum or basal ganglia so all these are the causes of dysarthria and dysarthria that means articulation of word is impaired now the aphasia language impairment or the abnormalities causes lesion in the categorical hemisphere that means the dominant hemisphere types of aphasia Majorly, there are two types of aphasia, sensory aphasia and motor aphasia. First one, sensory aphasia or vernix aphasia or fluent aphasia. This occurs in the lesions of the vernix area. And which type of abnormality has been noted in this sensory aphasia? Difficulty in understanding the meaning of speech, unable to interpret thoughts to be expressed and talks fluently but with less sense. So basically the Wernick area is responsible for all the sensory aspect of the speech, auditory aspect, visual aspect and tactile aspect. So it performs the function of uh, comprehension and intelligence. When this Wernick area has been damaged then auditory, visual and whatever the tactile information is not processed in a good way. Now the motor or non-fluent aphasia, this occurs in the lesions of the Broca area. Broca's area forms the motor aspect of the speech and the main center for the word formation. Although the Wernick's area is normal, sending information to the Broca's area, but here the Broca's area is damaged. So that although the meaning of auditory, visual and tactile uh, stimuli or the speech has been possible to understand, but the execution of motor aspect of the speech is not possible. Alright? 
so difficult in speaking it can decide but can't emit that means what to speech has been decided but the execution of the speech is not possible and here the speech is non fluent now the next anomic aphasia lesion of the angular gyrus and uh, in this condition difficulty in the understanding of the written language or the pictures here specifically the written language or pictures are not able to understand by the patients auditory information processing is normal next global aphasia it's a general aphasia loss of receptive and expressive functions of speech that means sensory aspect is also affected and motor aspect is also affected wernick area and broca area both areas are affected so the speech is scant and non fluent conduction aphasia there will be the lesions of arcuate fasciculus or area number 40 41 42 so here what the thing is happening the arcuate fasciculus transferring the information from wernick area to broca area and when this conduction of the impulses or the information has been not possible to occur then the person can't put words together and the person becomes very confused now the word deafness lesions of the auditory association area so the person is not able to interpret the meaning of heard words whatever the word the person is hearing but the person is not able to interpret the meaning but not able to understand the meaning of the heard word so that is known as word deafness word blindness or it is known as dyslexia lesion of the angular gyrus so in this condition the person is not able to interpret the meaning of written words whatever the written word the person is seeing but the person is not able to understand the meaning of the written words difficulty to decode a word to spell and read accurately and fluently so these are two different abnormalities word deafness and word blindness now aphasias the characteristic response of a patients when shown a picture of a chair so here type of aphasia and site of lesion and these are the characteristic naming errors which could be found in the patient so when there is a broca area has been damaged that is the motor aphasia and the speech has become non fluent the person will speak chair 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 like that now wernick area has been damaged the condition is known as sensory aphasia the speech is fluent the person will speak stool neologism that means whatever the picture has been shown the person will speak some other words or new words so here when the wernick area is damaged although the execution of the speech is normal but the understanding of the auditory visual and tactile information in the form of speech is not possible so the person is not able to understand the whatever the picture of a chair and the person will speak some new words when there is a conduction aphasia or areas 40 41 and 42 are damaged and the speech is fluent the person will speak flare no 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 swear tear like that anomic aphasia that means when there is a abnormality or damage to the angular gyrus angular gyrus it is responsible for the meaning of written speech or the written words when the angular gyrus is damaged it is known as condition anomic aphasia so here the person is not able to understand the meaning of written speech that means the picture which has been shown to the patient the patient is not able to understand it so what the patient will speech the what the person will speech i know what is it i have a lot of them but the person not able to understand that this is the chair all right so that is the aphasia that means language impairment or abnormalities if you like this presentation please try to share it with your friends group batch and colleagues